Hi there and welcome to our fifth lesson on linear functions. My name is Dylan. In this lesson, we will be focusing on that number which describes the rate of change or gradient in a linear function. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to interpret the value of m as movements on a graph. And once again, Lerato and Ntombi will be helping us in this lesson. Welcome to you both. Hi, it's great to be back. Now, what can you two girls tell me about the letter M in the standard linear formula? Y is equal to mx plus c is the standard form. M is always multiplied by the input number. M is the rate of change. M is the gradient. It makes the line skew. M can be different numbers. 1 or 2, 0. Not bad at all. If we know the value of m, we can use it to find any other point on the graph, so long as we have one point on the graph to begin with. And if we don't know the value of m, we can always use two points on the graph in order to find the rate of change. Now there are some finer details that we need to investigate about rate of change and gradient in order to understand linear functions and their graphs more fully. Look at this formula to work out the rate of change. What does it mean? Do you have any idea, girls? Ish. I really struggle with that. Well, think of it as a recipe or set of instructions with which you can calculate the rate of change. The formula says that m is the number when we do this calculation. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I suppose the two y's are output numbers. And the two x's are input numbers. Now you're getting it. So subtract two output numbers, then subtract two input numbers, and divide. Now everything in a mathematical formula has a meaning. Therefore the order of the x's and y's is important. This little 2 and 1 give instructions about which y's and x's we can use. You can interpret it like this. This y1 and x1 belong to the same point, and this y2 and x2 belong to another point. So depending on which point you choose to be x1 and y1, and which point you choose to be x2 and y2, you must always find the difference between the points by subtracting the values in the same order. Let's try an example. You know two points on a linear function are the point 4, 5, and 12, 21. Now let's analyze this information. We can show this information as follows. Here we have an input of 4 with an output of 5 and an input of 12 with an output of 21. In other words, we have xy pairs. Here the input is 4 with its corresponding output of 5. Here the input is 12 with its corresponding output of 21. Now, we know that y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 is what we need to calculate. So, the formula says subtract the y's. So for the y's, we have 21 minus 5. So the top of our ratio, the numerator, we'll write as 21 minus 5. Now we need to do the same thing for the x's. You must subtract in the same order, so it is 12 minus 4. That's right. So for the x's in the same order, we have 12 minus 4. So the denominator of this ratio is 12 minus 4. Now we can simplify this to become the following. 21 minus 5, 16, divided by 12 minus 4 is 8. Now we divide the 16 by the 8, and we see that the gradient is equal to 2. Yes, we did this before on a table and on a graph. Yes, we found the difference in output values and shared it evenly between the difference in the input values. 
Oh, so that's all the formula says. Nice, hey? Right. But the formulary is useful in another way as well because it allows us to interpret rates of change. Write this one down. The rate of change of a linear function is two thirds. And one point on the graph is minus four one. What we need to do is find another point on the graph. Okay, so use two thirds as m in the gradient formula. Right. Now two thirds is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So the 2 is the difference between the output values and the 3 is the difference between the input values. We said earlier that we can use m to find another point on the graph so long as we have a point to start at. And the point we've been given is the point minus 4, 1. Let's see how to do it. We know from the point we've been given that x is minus 4 and y is 1. Now we need to count 3 units forward to find our new input value. So if we count 3 units forward, this will take us to an input value of minus 1. And we need to move 2 units forward to our new output value. So 2 units away from 1 is the new output value of 3. So the point is negative 1 and 3. Do you think the graph will be a straight line? Well we know that this graph is a straight line because we were told it is a linear function. What we need to make sure of though is whether this graph's rate of change is 2 thirds. So let's check. We were given the point minus 4 1 which we're going to call P and we found the point Q minus 1 3 using our gradient. Now the point P lies over there and point Q minus 1 3 lies over there. Now in order to get from point P to point Q I need to walk up two units in the y direction and then I need to walk right in the x direction another three units. So our rate of change is indeed 2 divided by 3. In other words our gradient is equal to two-thirds. But two-thirds is 0, 0,66. So is the gradient 0, 0,66? That's a really good question. If you do the calculation 2 divided by 3 on your calculator, you will get the answer 0, 0,666 recurring, which you could round off to 0, 0,66, .66, although you will lose some accuracy. It is difficult for us to count off a measure of 0, 0,66 or 66 hundredths on our graph. Instead, we choose to use the equivalent value of 2 thirds just to make life easier for ourselves. So instead of measuring a difference in the y values of 0, 0,66 for every one unit of change in the input values, we instead work with a difference of 2 in the y values for every change of 3 units in the input values. The formula for gradient reminds us that we can use any equivalent of the number that represents the gradient. So in other words, if we were given a formula where the gradient was 0, 0,25, what would an equivalent number be? We can use a quarter. Sure. 0, 0,25 is the decimal equivalent of one quarter. So if you wanted to use one quarter as the gradient, you could. Now tell me, how could we use one quarter as the gradient? It will be one unit up along the y-axis and four units forward on the x-axis. Now what if we have a gradient of negative three divided by two? Where are we going to put the negative? Well let's think about this logically. A negative gradient means that the output values decrease as the input values increase. So in other words, a gradient of negative 3 divided by 2 can be rewritten as negative 3 divided by 2. In other words, the y values decrease by 3 units for every 2 units in which the x values increase. Let's look at such a graph. Let's choose the function y equal to 
negative 3 divided by 2x plus 1. Now we know that this graph will cut the y-axis at the point 0c. In actual fact, this graph has a y-intercept of 1. So in other words, we know that the graph will pass through this point, the y-intercept, which is the point 0, 1. What we now need to do is find another point that lies along this graph using the gradient. Now, from the point that which you've been given, we're going to start at this point. We're going to move three units down in the y direction. So that is one, two, three units down. And then we're going to, use, we're going to move two units forward in the x direction. One, two units. And we're going to land up at this point here, which is the point two minus two. Now look carefully at how these points lie. Now, how else could I have moved? What about up and left? Yes, from zero, one, I could walk three units up and then walk two units to the left, which will get me to the point minus two, four. Now notice that these three points all lie on the same straight line, and I'm going to just draw that line in. So now what we've seen is that the gradient of 3 divided by negative 2 is the same as our original gradient of negative 3 divided by 2. For this example, the gradient is negative, so one of the movements must be negative. Let's recap the formula that we learned. If a straight line passes through x1, y1 and x2, y2, then m, the gradient or rate of change, is equal to the difference between the y values divided by the difference between the x values. Remember that formula and use it when you work with the gradient of a linear function. Lerato and Tombi, thanks very much for your help. Bye, see you. Join me next time when we'll learn about translations of linear functions. Bye. <laughs>